John McCain is my friend, and I know you hear that phrase used all the time in politics. I mean it. John McCain is my friend. We've traveled the world together. It's a friendship that goes beyond politics. And the personal courage and heroism demonstrated by John still amazes me. But I profoundly, I profoundly disagree with the direction John wants to take this country from Afghanistan to Iraq. Chris just made a, uh, a wonderful rhetorical question there. How many times will we hear uh, John McCain or anybody else say that about any Democrat, let alone Joe Biden, next week in St. Paul? The, uh, the over-under on that is one. Perhaps lost in the shuffle of, among the speeches from Bill Clinton and Joe Biden tonight, the two headliners. An extraordinarily tough indictment of John McCain from the 2004 Democratic nominee, John T. Kerry, who pulled a couple of turnarounds on things that happened to him and used them against McCain. When we choose a commander in chief this November, we are electing judgment and character, not years in the Senate or on this earth. Time and again, Barack Obama has seen farther and listened harder and listened better and thought harder. And time and again, Barack Obama has proven right. John McCain stood on the deck of an aircraft carrier just three months after 9-11, and he proclaimed, next up, Baghdad. The judgment immediately from Barack Obama was to see an occupation of undetermined length, undetermined consequences, undetermined cost that, in his words, would only fan the flames of the Middle East. Well, guess what? Mission accomplished. So, so, who can we trust to keep America safe? When Barack Obama promised to honor the best traditions of both parties and talk to our enemies, John McCain scoffed. George Bush called it the false comfort of appeasement. But today, Bush's diplomats are doing exactly what Obama said, talking with Iran. So who can we trust to keep America safe? When democracy rolled out of Russia and Russia and the tanks rolled into Georgia, we saw John McCain immediately respond with outdated thinking of the Cold War. Barack Obama responded like a true friend of Georgia and a statesman of the 21st century. So who can we trust to keep America safe? When Democrats called for a timetable to make Iraqis stand up for Iraq and bring our heroes home. John McCain called it cut and run. But today, even President Bush has seen the light, and he and Prime Minister Maliki agree on, guess what? A timetable. So who can we trust to keep America safe? The McCain-Bush Republicans have been wrong again and again and again. And they know they will lose on the issues. So, the candidate who once campaigned on the promise of a campaign of ideas, not insults, now has nothing left but personal attacks. How, how insulting to suggest that those who question the mission question the troops. How pathetic to suggest that those who question a failed policy doubt America itself. How desperate to tell the son of a single mother who chose community service over money and privilege that he doesn't put America first. No one. No one can question Barack, no one can question Barack Obama's patriotism. Like all of us, like all of us, he was taught what it means to be an American by his family. His grandmother, who worked on a bomber assembly line in World War II, his grandfather, who marched in Patton's army, and his great uncle, who enlisted in the army right out of high school at the height of the war. And on a spring day in 1945, that great uncle helped liberate one of the concentration camps at Buchenwald. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Barack Obama's uncle is here with us tonight. Please join me in saluting this American hero, Charlie Payne. Charlie, Charlie, your nephew, Barack Obama, will end this politics of distortion and division. He will be a president who seeks not to perfect the lies of swift voting, but to end them once and for all. This election, this election is a chance for America to tell the merchants of fear and division you don't decide who loves this country. You don't decide who is a patriot. You don't decide whose service counts and whose doesn't. Senator John Kerry earlier tonight, words that would have served him well in 2004, but may yet serve Barack Obama very well in 2008. Chris? Well, the results of our latest tech survey questionnaire are in right now. We ask, quote, is it important for the Democratic National Convention this week to A, define Barack Obama, or B, to attack John McCain? Well, this is about 50-50. Couldn't be much closer. 52% of those who were surveyed and, and texted in said the Democrats need to define Barack Obama, and 48% said the need is to attack John McCain. So that's not very decisive. But here's one that is. Earlier today, we asked, quote, did Hillary Clinton's speech last night help unite the party? Well, here's a division. 87% of those who participated said yes. Just 13% said no. Keith and I will be back from Denver after this. I'm Mike Wilson. And as a small town Tennessee guy and a registered Republican, I can't tell you what an honor it is to be here today to nominate Barack Obama. To nominate Barack Obama as the next president of the United States. A registered Republican vet. We might add. We rejoin you with MSNBC's coverage of the Democratic Convention, night number three, live from Denver. Let's go back to Nora O'Donnell and the panel. Nora. All right, Chris and Keith, thank you. And uh, as Barack Obama prepares to make this big speech at Mile High Stadium, there is the possible scenario that John McCain's running mate will be leaked out tomorrow. According to the Politico, they are reporting that John McCain has selected his running mate. Uh, that they will likely campaign together. This announcement will be made on Friday morning. Rachel, what do you make of it? Well, to try to, if they do it, if they l allow it to leak deliberately, yeah. it's slightly low road, right? But I do find it incredible that the official announcement is going to come on Friday. Friday is the anniversary of Katrina making landfall in New Orleans. And when Katrina made landfall in New Orleans, where was John McCain? He was standing on an airport tarmac with President Bush cutting into his own Happy John McCain birthday cake. That's where he was when Katrina made landfall. John McCain went on to vote against the investigation of the government's response to Katrina. John McCain, went, when Congress was considering how to respond it, he cautioned Congress against overreacting. And now we've got Hurricane Gustav churning off the coast, <laughs> potentially with the beat on New Orleans yeah. again. And the regional levy director in New Orleans says, well, we've gotten some stuff done in the levees. We think we could withstand a 30-year storm. Hurricane <laughs> Katrina was a 396-year yeah. storm. Yeah. We haven't done it. We haven't fixed it. Katrina is the strongest symbol in this yeah. country of how bad Republicans have been at governing, other than Jack Abramoff's prison uniform. Yeah, no. so, <laughs> given what Rachel just laid out is the perfect storm brewing, 
Well, it's a Democrats. storm that could have political impact. I mean, look, no one can root for Gusto. I covered Katrina, and the devastation that it wrought in New Orleans was just horrible. I saw, I ran into Mayor Ray Nagin today at the Pepsi Center, and he was very concerned about the possibility of, uh, of another flood, and, and, and questioning, you know, what has the Army Corps of Engineers done to prevent another disaster like the one we saw, and um, and will the government respond if it has to respond in a way that's that, that's you know in any way more professional and more life saving than it did the first time? Pat, how does that not then seep into the coverage about competence? Because that's ultimately what about uh, the George Bush administration that many people challenged with Katrina and not only the Iraq War, but then whether John McCain has the competence to be commander in chief. Uh, I don't think it, I really don't think it affects John McCain. I mean, certainly if it, Katrina will be a big reminder of the Bush administration, its greatest domestic failure. But you asked about the vice president, did you not? I think that what, what's happened is... Yeah, but Rachel brought up the other yeah, stuff. No, <laughs> he's, he's we'll do the, the, we'll do the hurricane later for you, Rachel. Look, but here's the thing. Uh, the Biden selection, I think, should point to me more to a Romney thing because Biden helps in those color counties moves Pennsylvania out of reach, and you could counter that if you could pick up Michigan. And also, Biden will be excellent in debate on foreign policy. Absolutely. And I, I'm, I've been a fan of Sarah Palin in Alaska, but I think she's just too young and too inexperienced to put into a contest there, whereas Mitt, uh, Mitt has done a great job. However, I do hear this. I hear that McCain's leaning toward Palenti for personal reasons of the two, and that, and that a lot of people are pushing. I think the Bushes are pushing for Mitt Romney. Now, I'm gonna give my personal preference. I like Mitt, I just met him today over at Morning Joe. We had a great time, my sister worked for him. I think he would be the better choice. I like the guy personally, but I think it's, a, I think it's really a toss up right now. It won't be, it won't be Lieberman. If it's Lieberman, I'll be going to the convention early for other purposes. <laughs> I, you know, I've always thought that Romney was the best choice yeah. for McCain from his point of view, and I think that's the most likely choice. Imagine picking the man who was governor of Minnesota during the Minneapolis bridge collapse on the date that is the anniversary of Katrina making landfall in New Orleans, and now making that the case for yeah. the American people. He's responsible for a bridge collapse? No, but Pat, You've got to be kidding. No, this is picking, kooky. Picking the anniversaries and saying, I want it all to happen again, but you've got to acknowledge, you this, about? acknowledge the symbolic power of choosing that date, the that bridge. setting, and that now guy. You're telling me the date a bridge collapsed on a hot federal highway is, you know, something nationally important? If, That's preposterous. Yes. Yes. is politically to divide Americans. I think that Americans right now, that, 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 you, that it's not necessarily driving a wedge between different parts of America and calling one side bad, one side good. I think what's politically salient right now is recognizing how mad Americans are about the fact that our infrastructure is third world rate and declining. That we're at, that nobody's ever been held accountable for the war. The country's unified around this stuff. It just, it's just, it's a question of which political party will be okay. smart enough to capitalize but Eugene, on. Eugene, is Governor Pawlenty responsible for that? Well, no, he's not responsible for the bridge. He, however, happens to be a Republican, and the Republican administration, uh, I think, can rightly be bl be blamed for um, the the deterioration, a lot of deterioration of infrastructure, or at least the failure to fix it, and for the uh, right. inadequate and shameful response to, to you know, Katrina, and it's, we're talking about the anniversary of Katrina, not of the yeah. bridge collapse. Right. You know, look, here's my question. Mitt Romney, I, right. I, I think he's a, by far the better campaigner. I think he'd right. be a, a, but I don't think he gets you Michigan. I don't no, think he I gets think he Michigan. Does. I I mean, I, you're right. Well, what I, I don't heard think he could automatically do. was governor I, a long time ago, and the Romney name doesn't have what it used to have. But, but what I heard from Republicans today is that it's down to Pawlenty and Ridge. Well, listen, John McCain has supposedly already made his choice, but those were the final two candidates. What about that, a Governor Ridge who has uh, more appeal to perhaps I, I think more Ridge, Americans because he's an independent, probably to some of maybe those Hillary Clinton supporters Ridge, who say that they don't trust Barack Obama? Ridge would be a automatic choice Except if he were not pro-choice, but he's going to have trouble with the, he's got trouble with the Catholic clergy up there, and then you got to take the evangelicals. What do they think of a Catholic who is pro-choice? And so this has always been the problem. I agree, if he were pro-life, he would be in, in like Flynn. Huh? But those same evangelicals also have some issues with Mitt Romney. Uh, well, you know, they do because of the Mormonism, yeah, but I mean, I basically think they will go along with Mitt Romney if Barack Obama is the alternative. I do think he doesn't give you Michigan, no, not automatically, 
but it gives you a little bit of a claim on a state because there's a lot of democratic problems up there in the city of Detroit that Rachel yeah. can tell us about because her friend's up there. Got a little social problem, don't they, uh, <laughs> Rachel? Well, we, we have got a fascinating... Are, are you talking about I'm Kwame talking Kirkpatrick about Kwame and your state, state economy? The complete scandalous mess in Detroit, that gives Republicans more of a, a reach in there than they got in some other state. If you I think, think that's if, my social problem. If you think Detroit's <laughs> about to become a, a Republican problems. city, All right. it's time to oh, take no, a break. No, no, All right, we are, we are getting set up for a fascinating Detroit day tomorrow, not only because Barack Obama, but Democrats. because John McCain has apparently made his decision about who is vice president. That person will be informed tomorrow. What's your guess? Come on, put it on the line here, Nora. We've you know, I, I'm still a reporter, you know, not a commentator. Come I just on. reported earlier. I heard that it's down to uh, Palenti and Ridge. That's what I was told you today. You had to bet. Who would you say? Uh, let me remind you what I reminded you last night. I lead the panel, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I ask the questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love you. Thank I love you. Boss lady. We have a group hug in a minute. Right. And I'm the rap, and with that, Keith, I'm sending it up to you, buddy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, Rachel's a bad influence on you, Nora, I gotta say. <laughs> Thanks, Nora. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Gene. Listen, while well, we're talking about the Republican vice presidential uh, choice and the prospect of it being leaked out to sort of blunt the Obama acceptance speech tomorrow, Chris and I were sitting here talking about this, and I thought you made an excellent point. It's great to leak that out if it's going to be a news. wow, a wow moment. Yeah, no, Joe, it'll be Joe news. Lieberman. Yeah, Joe Lieberman. A Democrat or... who's pro-choice, who agrees with you on the war in Iraq, but disagrees with you on other things. But to pick a Tim Pawlenty, it's like two little puddles of water coming together. There is no splash. There is no news. Tim Pawlenty, the name itself suggests not interesting. It sounds like something you order on the side. No, it's, uh, it's like, it's like remember Mario Cuomo used to talk about polenta. Exactly. You know, it's some sort of basic food that's somewhat substantive, but has no bite to it. I really think the news would be, obviously, Kay Billy Hutchison. That would be Out of nowhere, yeah. a woman who many believe, and I think she's a really impressive public figure, could be easily the next governor of Texas, but not necessarily pro-life in a very dramatic way. A little bit murky there. I think that's the way she wants mm -hmm. it, in fact. Uh, if you pick Joe Lieberman, it would be the first time since, what, Andrew Johnson, when you'd have a split ticket, when you'd have someone from the other party. Johnson was a Democrat, a, uh, a pro-Northern Democrat. Correct. Uh, but to pick someone, because you couldn't pick anyone else, because no one else came to mind, in a state you will not carry, Minnesota. Is this to, to help <laughs> defeat Al Franken? Is this the goal? We're because, putting everything we can right, into Tim in defeating, because, uh, defeating Al Franken. Because Tom Ridge was too edgy. Yeah, I know. Ridge, again, another spectacular choice if you want spectacle. But again, Pat is probably right, yeah, knowing the Republican Party. You would have the... Uh, the Tony Perkins of the world and uh, the focus on the family people and uh, he knows the whole rich list of those people who would immediately rebel. It would be like the Dixiecrats walking out to make an unfortunate reference. So there are a lot of Democrats having had a big night or saying, pick Lieberman, pick but Ridge. I think if it's Mitt Romney or it's Pawlenty, it's not interesting because the, the I, I think Nora is right. If it's, But I think saying it's narrowed down to, um, to Ridge, I would guess is to try to make Ridge feel better and to help Pennsylvania for the next 24 hours. But after that, it won't do much good. Yeah, unfortunately, not they're, not, they're not voting in the next 24 no, hours, so that's so. not going to have an issue. Well, obviously, we're going to spend a whole week with the Republicans and talking about that next week in Minnesota. And there's still much more to come here, obviously, tomorrow at an Invesco Field, Mile High Stadium. Uh, plus, more of the sights and sounds of this night. You're watching MSNBC's coverage, night three of the Democratic Convention, live in Denver. up this convention to make sure that everybody who wants to come can join in the party and join in the effort to take America back. I think we are going to have a great night tomorrow night and I look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, I miss it too. We all miss it. Every morning I and we continue with MSNBC's continuing coverage, which is why we call it continuing of the Democratic Convention. After an entire summer of hand-wringing over unity among the Democratic Party, amid the Democratic Party, today came the big test. The moment that had been negotiated for weeks 
and now seems years ago. Exactly how would Barack Obama win the nomination while respecting and pleasing the supporters of Hillary Clinton? Both Clinton and Obama's names were entered into nomination tonight. The roll call vote ensued, and then, about halfway through it, Senator Clinton dramatically joined the New York delegation to bring that roll call to an end. Here is how that history was made. Madam Secretary, on behalf of the great state of New York, with appreciation for the spirit and dedication of all who are gathered here, with eyes firmly fixed on the future, in the spirit of unity, with the goal of victory, with faith in our party and our country, let's declare together in one voice, right here, right now, that Barack Obama is our candidate and he will be our president. <laughs> Madam Secretary. <laughs> Madam Secretary, I move that the convention suspend the procedural rules and suspend the further conduct of the roll call vote. All votes cast by the delegates will be counted. And that I move Senator Barack Obama of Illinois be selected by this convention by acclamation as the nominee of the Democratic Party for Senator Clinton has moved in the spirit of unity to su suspend the rules of the convention and to nominate Barack Obama by acclamation as the presidential candidate of the Democratic Party. Is there a second? All in favor of the motion to suspend the rules and nominate by acclamation Barack Obama as the Democratic Party's presidential candidate, please say aye. opposed, please say no. Two-thirds of the delegates having voted in the affirmative, the motion is adopted. The fastest gavel in the West. Hours after Senator Clinton's motion to nominate Senator Obama by acclamation, her husband took to the podium to make the case that Senator Obama is ready to be Commander-in-Chief on day one. Here is some of what former President Bill Clinton said this evening. Everything I learned in my eight years as president and in the work I have done since in America and across the globe has convinced me that Barack Obama is the man for this job. Now, he has a remarkable ability to inspire people, to raise our hopes and rally us to high purpose. He has the intelligence and curiosity every successful president needs. His policies on the economy, on taxes, on health care, on energy are far superior to the Republican alternatives. He has, shown, he has shown a clear grasp of foreign policy and national security challenges and a firm commitment to rebuild our badly strained military. His family heritage and his life experiences have given him a unique capacity to lead our increasingly diverse nation in an ever more interdependent world. The long, hard primary tested and strengthened him. And in his first presidential decision, the selection of a running mate, he hit it out of the park. With Joe Biden's experience and wisdom, supporting Barack Obama's proven understanding, instincts, 
and insight. America will have the national security leadership we need. And so, my fellow Democrats, I say to you, Barack Obama is ready to lead America and to restore American leadership in the world. Barack Obama is ready to honor the oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Barack Obama is ready to be President of the United States. The ready, ready, ready speech in which Senator Clinton said he hit it out of the park. And we're showing you there those lights in the distance. Coors Field, the home of the Colorado Rockies baseball team, where we're told at this hour about a thousand Clinton administration and campaign alumni are gathered at Coors Field awaiting the arrival at 1045 Mountain Time tonight, the arrival of President Clinton for a reunion, uh, an, an alumni meeting. The senator will not be attending, but President Clinton will be, and that's why the lights are on and there are people home at a baseball stadium at quarter to 11 local time. All right, to our crowd here after their crowd there, let's go down to Chris Matthews and our lovely audience. Chris? Thank you, Keith. That's good. everybody to give everybody a chance to talk okay a little respect here sir yes why are you for John McCain well I actually wanted him in 2000 and I would have rather had him in 2000 uh, I like uh, the points that he's making I I think that we should be uh, drilling oil out in the Gulf I mean that's that's a easy straight-up answer okay thank you very much let's go over here we're working here uh, what do you think uh, what do you think Right. Who are you for? You can't vote, can you? No, but I can vote in like, let's see, five years? I'm for Obama because we need a change. We can't have another four years of the Bush policies. Okay, thank you. What do you think? I'm totally for Obama. I think the Clintons did a fabulous job understanding that we need to unite the party. This isn't about egos. This isn't about any individual person. This is about the country and what's best for all of us. Were you surprised positively or any other way by the manner in which uh, the Clintons handled this uh, very tricky two days. I was very pleased, frankly. I was very concerned because the media made it seem like there's a huge problem with Hillary supporters, and I think that's completely overblown. Everybody I've talked to understands that this isn't about their ego or their hurt feelings. This is about the country and what's best for all of us. Okay, and it's thank, thank you. Let's get some more views. What do you think? Um, I think uh, Hillary Clinton did a great job of uniting um, everyone, and I think you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be good to see Barack Obama out there. I think I think it's good. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I guess I I'm just really excited about the prospect of the next couple of days and what the the party has ahead. We had an incredible night tonight, and it's gonna be great. What do you think of Pat Buchanan? <laughs> I think Rachel. I think Rachel killed him tonight. Do you think he should run for president again? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, what is, what's the C stand for? It's the Cubs. The Cubs! Heck yeah, this, that's why this is historic. Well, the Mets beat the Phillies tonight, but that will change tomorrow night, but go ahead. Uh, I just think that this could possibly be the first time, that, obviously the first time that we're going to have a black president and that he's coming from Chicago, and that's going to be a good sign for the Cubbies. We may win the World Series for the first time. <laughs> Well, you're well dressed. Yeah, we'll I know. We'll give you that. Well, I, I kind of look nice. Yeah. Okay, tell me about this. How old are you, roughly? I'm 18, actually. Oh, so you can vote. Yeah, it's my first election. And what what are you gonna what uh, what does that uh, mean to you? Uh, I really don't feel like going to war in the next couple of years, and so yeah. uh, I'm voting for Obama. Yeah. Okay, thank you, madam. Yes. Well, that's all I do is ask. I don't have a okay. question. Your this? feelings, your thoughts about tonight? I did think it was. Uh, unexpectedly harmonious. You're right, I'm part of the media that thought there would be a bigger fight, but I also don't know what's going on below the surface. When people Here's like Governor Rendell continue to do what they do, I'm not sure what's going on. Here's the thing, Chris. We've got new blood coming in here. Black, Obama, okay? We have his wife, the first black 
female as um, first, the first lady of this country. That is incredible. We have Hillary Clinton, the first woman that has been and gotten this far and has been so gracious in this week, in her speech yesterday, passing it off to Barack Obama. That is incredible and very <laughs> awesome in this country. Yeah. It is awesome. Thank you. Very well said. It couldn't be said better than that. Back to you, Keith. Thanks, Chris. All right, it Chris. Better than that tonight. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, panel. Thank you, panel of fans. Final thoughts from Nora and the other panel on what Barack Obama needs to do tomorrow at uh, Mile High Stadium when we return. This is MSNBC's coverage of the Democratic Convention live from Denver, Colorado. If you missed uh, President Clinton's speech or Joe Biden's speech, we'll be replaying them later in the evening. But uh, let's uh, sort of wrap this up uh, on the breaking events of the night. Final thoughts on this third night of the Democratic National Convention with Nora O'Donnell and our panel. Nora. And Keith, thank you. And as we reach into day four already at the time of this hour with our panel, we're looking forward, looking to uh, tomorrow, or I guess it's today already, <laughs> Barack Obama's big speech, of course, at Mile High Stadium. Um, Pat, your final thoughts. What does Barack Obama need to do? What do the Republicans need to do? Republicans should stay out of uh, stay out of tomorrow, but Barack Obama should not let the Republicans drive him away from the speech that brought him where he is. Now, he has overdone that speech. A lot of us have seen it so many times. Diminishing returns. He got in trouble in Berlin because it was too grandiloquent. But he should not try to change now and do some different kind of speech because the 50 million or 60 million Americans haven't seen it. Give the big speech as well as you can, as honed as you can. Maybe add some things, uh -huh. but don't let the Republicans drive you off the and game you, that you, got you, you here. Should it be more workmanlike, as he says it's going to be? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Look, he's going to have policy prescriptions in, in his speeches. He always does. He's going to talk about middle class pain and the economy. But in the final analysis, Pat Buchanan is right. This is what brung him. This is what this got. Is this is the coming. way Barack Obama. You know, people say he can't connect with the American people. Duh, he connected with the American people enough to become the Democratic nominee. In fact, this. This is what connected with the American sure. people, and that's what he ought to do. How about that, Rachel? I think so. I think that what happened in this convention, the great distance that was traveled, is that the unity issue is settled. And what Barack Obama needs to do tomorrow is is, is look at the look at that tape of John Kerry speaking tonight and think. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy who's giving the speech that would have won me the presidency four years too late because I only saw in hindsight that I needed to defend myself loud and clear and that Americans love a leader. Americans love a fighter. Americans love somebody who won't take it without giving it back. So I, I hope that I, I hope that when, that 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 Kerry's uh, example tonight is going to be seen for that because it was a great speech from Kerry and a huge night as we look toward uh, tomorrow with Barack Obama think, and Vespa Nora? Field and certainly uh, with Al Gore as well and Chris and Keith. It's been a great evening. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, Pat, Jean, Rachel. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to our crowd here. Chris and I and the crowd will return tomorrow night at 7 Eastern to begin our coverage of the final night of the Democratic Convention, Al Gore's speech, and of course, the convention reaching its crescendo with the Obama acceptance speech. Good night from Denver. Last night, Hillary told us in no uncertain terms that she is going to do everything she can to elect Barack Obama. That makes two of us was the next line. Welcome back to MSNBC's continuing coverage of the Democratic National Convention in Denver. President Clinton working his crowd into a frenzy. Setting the stage, of course, for Joe Biden's big speech as the vice presidential nominee coming up in just about 20 minutes. I'm Chris Matthews alongside Keith Oberman. Let's go right now to the insiders. Uh, of course, former U.S. Congressman from Tennessee, Harold Ford Jr., and the longtime Republican strategist Mike Murphy. First to you, Mike, and then to Harold. It seems to me the Republican ad writers in all their zeal are now composing an ad comparing Bill Clinton's remarks favorable to Barack Obama tonight and those equally and 180 degrees unfavorable to him 
previous. Do you expect that's going on right now? Yeah, Mike prob Murphy. Yeah, probably it'll be a miniseries. I mean, here's what I, I would say about this speech. I enjoyed the irony of it. I think first, uh, Bill Clinton was a strong speech, effective. He did what Hillary Clinton didn't do last night, which was make a direct personal endorsement of Barack Obama. But I had to feel the irony and I was chuckling at it. I tried to look at it through the lens of Hillary Clinton sitting there in the audience thinking, you know, there's kind of the good Bill Clinton and the bad Bill Clinton. For a year, Bill Clinton had screwed up his wife's campaign. Now the good Bill Clinton shows up to hit a strong triple for Barack Obama. Uh, the irony in that is tremendous, I think. He was effective, I'll give him that. But he ain't running. Barack Obama is, and I'm waiting to see him come close the deal. It's been all Clinton all the time. Barack's going to hold his thing in another building, and we'll see how he does. Okay. What do you think of that, Harold Ford? Do you think it's okay, smart? Uh, John F. Kennedy did it, of course, at the Coliseum in California back in 1960, very dramatically going to another setting, a much larger venue at the football stadium. Is it smart to do that again? It's bold, dramatic, and not too many people can pull it off. Perhaps he can, and I hope, uh, believe he will. Let me say one thing about this speech, about Bill Clinton's remarks tonight. He essentially answered the two or three big questions I think that McCain and that team will raise. If you're managing John McCain's team, you would have to raise age and experience and say that four years ago, Barack Obama was in the state Senate. What Bill Clinton walked through, the only, there are only two people, one was on this show tonight, Democrats, living presidents who can give us a true sense of what qualities and characteristics and abilities you need as a president. He reminded us, Bill Clinton, that he was younger than Barack Obama 16 years ago when he ran the first time and won. He reminded us, with just his presence, that he had been, he was elected and re-elected, the only Democrat uh, in some 60 years, 67 years, to enjoy that distinction. So to hear him lay out that Barack Obama is ready, that we can't afford the four more years. He hit on the two themes that if Mike Murphy were managing this speech, and that I think he'd have to agree. And I don't fault McCain for wanting to go after Barack the way he's going after them. What, what Bill Clinton did tonight was to give Joe Biden and Barack Obama, I think, a good sense of how to run this campaign but, but going I forward. Think one, one footnote to that is Bill Clinton had done a lot more when he was the young candidate running. He'd been a multi-term successful governor, been a leader in the party in the South and trying to move it to the center. Barack Obama is still relatively new and relatively inexperienced. You line those two guys up, and the fact is, sorry, partisan one note crowd, that there is a big experience gap. Look, I don't, I don't doubt that, I don't doubt that to be the case. That, that, that there are many who will, who, will make, who, 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 who will make the case of the inexperience. But what Bill Clinton didn't have that Barack Obama has. Barack Obama's been into the war zone that we're facing right now. Barack Obama serves on the uh, on on various committees in the Senate with responsibility for armed services. So I think that the questions the questions will be raised. But what 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 Bill Clinton did tonight? He helped unite this party. He said to Clinton supporters that I'm not only okay with this, I am ready for Obama's presence. The next yeah. several weeks, there will be the question. Okay. I think Bill and Hillary Clinton are the happiest people in town because they came, they both crushed in good speeches, and they left, and now they can go do what I would bet money they're going to do, which is quietly vote for John S. McCain. And finally, say one I believe that. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Mike, Mike wants to rattle this crowd, I think, and, and, rattle, <laughs> and, 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 and rattle us here on set. But the, the reality is this. You now have to get out and get with get to the issues. I think Dick Durbin said it very well with the David Gregory interview. It's now about taxes. It's about foreign policy. It's about energy. It's about infrastructure. And the questions now for Senator Obama, what, what the Clintons did for him, I think, in these last few days was to try to settle all of this intra-party stuff and the feuding. It's now time to get out and talk about the issues. And if Barack Obama does that well, we'll be getting ready to swear him in in, in January. If he does not, he won't win the race. I would agree with you there. Close. Going to be very close. Let me ask you, Mike, are we uh, to, uh, to uh, place the credibility of you as a pundit on your belief, which you've just asserted, that the Clintons will vote for John McCain? Absolutely. I really believe Hillary Clinton will vote for McCain. Look, they're friends. All right, come on. Don't shout me down. Let me talk. I mean, come on. This is, you guys are so in the tank. We ought to be filming this on a submarine. The fact is, Barack Obama, to his credit, has moved closer to Hillary Clinton and John McCain on foreign policy. Hillary and John right, McCain are friends. Argument. They work uh, together Mike, well. That's not what I'm asking no, no, you. I, I really believe Mike, let me get back to the question. On, let's wrap him up. Well, I want to ask right? this question, Mike. In what you say the audience out there is biased. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Where would you find an audience in sane America that would agree with you? <laughs>
John McCain is a different kind of Republican, and Hillary Clinton, who is a smart, tough, pragmatic Democrat, are a lot more common on most foreign policy questions. And so I just believe that. And I think a lot of smart money people do. A lot of reporters joke around about it. Well, I can't ad, know. I can't prove copy. it. Let me get that ad copy, Mike. Let's go over to Harold Ford. That's ad copy for a Republican ad campaign. Oh. Harold Ford, let me ask you this. Do you really believe that coming out of this experience watching it tonight, which you can objectively observe, in watching the, the performance of the two Clintons, watching how they put their heart into this recommendation of their followers to vote for the man they got beaten by with all their hearts tonight. It was not, how could they go from that performance and wish evil on this candidate? I'm asking you. Well, I don't, I don't think that, that they can. I think I disagree with Mike. Mike's entitled to his position, and we've got to respect that. He said in the last segment that he graded President Bush with a C, and I don't think that's going to make him very popular with any of his Republican friends, especially those named Bush. That being said, what, what the Clintons did the last 48 hours, last 24 hours is what Barack Obama needed. We must not forget, primaries often produce this outcome. Matter of fact, they do every time. You have a winner and you have a set of losers. Eight years ago, John McCain had to suck it up and go to the Republican convention and say nice things about George Bush after the Bush campaign had said those terrible things about him in South Carolina and everywhere else. So these things happen in primaries. This one here was unique because you had a woman, an African-American, you had all this money raised and they ran a long campaign. This convention now gets ready for Joe Biden to speak this evening. He will deliver what we hope will be an inspiring, and I happen to believe an inspiring set of remarks. And then tomorrow, the big dance, what we've all been waiting for, the Super Bowl. The, cha the, the champion of the party will deliver his remarks tomorrow and help lay where we go. And then come Friday morning, Chris and Keith, right. John McCain will select his VP nominee. And the question for my party at that point is how do we sustain some of this momentum? Because yep. a lot of attention will shift to what John McCain and his, his VP right. nominee yeah, will do. Convention too. It'll be a fair fight. And by the way, I'm not saying the Clintons are not doing what they can to unite the party. I thought they were two strong speeches. I've been saying it for a couple days. I just think in the privacy of the ballot box, that's what I'm predicting. Okay, now, uh, I don't know about thank that. Thank you very much, Harold Ford, Mike Murphy. For you now a news bulletin based upon that interview for CNN, for Fox Television. Mike Murphy, the Republican strategist of great renown, has given the Bush administration a C for his performance the last eight years. Let's go now to former DNC chairman David Wilhelm. David, let me ask you, what, 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 uh, what did you make of Mike Murphy's uh, pronunciamento his declaration that the party that he loves has achieved a mediocrity of success the last eight years. That is some serious grade inflation. I mean, that, this, this administration has been an F in just about every other area, every possible area. And the notion that the Clintons and, and Senator Clinton would somehow want to vote for uh, uh, John McCain is a bunch of bunk. I mean, she, her whole mission in her career is to bring health care to those who don't have it. John McCain has nothing when it comes to health care. She transferred the mission of her campaign to the candidacy of Barack Obama. That has been a huge deal. We are going to come out of this convention united, fired up, and ready to go. David, what is the job description of Joe Biden tonight in the next hour? As he gets up there in the next couple of minutes, what is it? Give me a verb for it. What does he have to do? Well, I think a couple of things. I think he, he gets to introduce himself to the American people. I think he can speak from, from the heart about what it is that he sees in Barack Obama that makes him a compelling candidate for the, for the presidency. But I also think it is important for him to raise the stakes of this election and to draw a, a, a stark contrast in both the areas of national security and the bread and butter issues that are most on the minds of the American people, the stark contrast between Barack Obama and John McCain, and he will do that in his speech tonight. Thank you very much, David Wilhelm, former DNC chair. Thanks for having Coming me. up, the nomination of uh, Joe Biden for vice president, and then Biden's speech. You're watching MSNBC's live coverage of the Democratic National Convention.